Hello, this is the first steps video in which I explain the user interface of the new software for newcomers. So here I have a project open in 3D mode. And we're going to take a look at that now and we're going to look at the software. Up here we have different tabs between which we can switch back and forth and between which we can also switch the view. I click on the construction mode and now see the project in 2D mode. I only switch on the ground floor or the basement. Here we have a floor plan and we can draw floor plans in 2D mode in construction mode. For this we have all the tools for walls, windows, doors and so on and the roof. And under project, we can make settings for the entire project and toggle various options on and off. Here I have just demonstrated was the 3D mode. Now I've hidden floors so you can only see parts of the house. Under terrain, you can see the terrain mode. And here you can change and adjust terrain points and create elevation points. Under 2D views, I can create views that I have created here. I can create sections here and create a finished construction plan with different views, the floor plans, and create various documents for a building application. Under 2D elements, I can draw different lines and draw different guides like in a graphics program, add text, and use tools to draw something. In edit, I have various tools to move the building, mirror it, and do other things, for example. Under trim, you will find various tools for splitting walls and trimming. And with dimensions, as the name suggests, you can create manual dimensions. Here you can create your own dimensions afterwards. But of course, there are also automatic dimensions in the program, as you can see here in the floor plan. I'll explain these in a moment. So, then it is very important for newcomers to know that if you click on the question mark above, you can open the manual under Help Topics. This is in English, and you can click on the various sub-items here in the sidebar on the left. With a double click, you open the folders and also open the individual articles on each individual topic. Under search, you can also search the manual for search terms. I now click on enter and I am shown all articles in which this word was found. And the word is also marked. So if I'm looking for something on a specific topic or on a certain function up here, then I enter this function once in the search and find various articles in which this function is explained. The manual is also very detailed and includes all topics. You should know that the manual is written for the highest version. So if functions are described here that you are missing, then your software version does not have this function. But the software contains all the functions that are described on the website in the version comparison. So I close the manual, then I click on the question mark again and see the shortcut keys here. So here I see the keyboard layout as it can be found in the software. It is certainly also very interesting for newcomers.
Also, up here, if I'm going to. Click here, Window Arrangement and Layout. Then I can, for example, choose a layout where I have two windows next to each other, and I see my floor plan both in 2D mode and on the right in 3D mode. I can also move this view here in the middle and make one bigger, the other smaller. Add. Then let's start with the individual functions. So here at the bottom right, you will find various snap points and auxiliary tools when drawing. I can turn it on and off by clicking on it. Blue means it's turned on. White means it's turned off. For example, here are snap options. Every time I hold my mouse a little longer over such a button, the title appears, which explains what turns it on and off. Further down here on the left, I have buttons with which I can turn various functions on and off. For example, the external dimensions. When I click in 3D mode, I have different buttons than when I click in 2D mode. It is also important to know that you are currently working in the mode in which you last clicked in. If I click here on the left, then the options for the 2D mode are switched on. When I click into the 3D mode on the right, the 3D mode is switched on. For example, I can click on the three dots below and select transparent walls. And also here on the right, the sidebar changes, depending on which mode you are currently in. So, Next, I want to show you how to manage the floors and how to show and hide them. I now click once in the 3D mode, and here at the top right I have the floor management. Here I have my floors. And I can choose which floors should be visible. Currently, all of them have been selected. And I can also make a different selection in 3D mode than in 2D mode. So currently, for example, I now click on current, i.e. the currently selected floor. With this blue dot I determine which floor is currently current, i.e. currently selected. But if I select selected, then all floors that are shown or hidden here are shown. Then there are the locked stories. So I can protect individual floors from editing. And I choose that, for example, no floor or the selected floor is to be protected. Or that all but the currently selected one. Below here we have the layers. Layers are created automatically, and when I draw walls, for example, they are automatically assigned to the walls. And for example, 2D lines are automatically mapped to 2D lines, and so on. You can also manually assign individual elements to individual layers. I have already explained this in another video. Layers can also be shown and hidden, so currently all layers are visible but I can also select only selected, for example, and then choose which layers should be displayed and which not. And for example, I'm currently editing the 2D mode, so in the 2D mode this is selected. When I click into the 3D mode, then I have to select that again. So I hide the roof here, and it is not displayed. Then we have the 3D objects here in the sidebar on the right. That's what I'd like to explain next. If you click on it, 
Then you will see different folders with 3D objects. These 3D objects are visible in both 2D mode and 3D mode, and they can be placed in both modes. If I want to open a folder now, I click on it twice and now select such a car, for example, and place it. If I want to come back from the folder, I click on this button at the top. This is how you move through the folders. You can go deeper and deeper into a folder and then back again through this button. So is the navigation here in all these functions. Then we have the symbol catalog. In the symbol catalog, we have various symbols, such as electrical symbols for electrical planning. And we also have ready-made garages and carports. Here I have a carport that I can also place, and you can see it now here in front. I can also create carports and save them in this symbol catalog. And there are also garages, pergolas and so on, for example. Then we have a catalog of materials, but you can only see it in 3D mode. So now I'm in 2D mode. Don't see it here on the right. I click once on the right in the 3D mode and the material catalog opens. In the material catalog, I see all the textures that are stored in the catalog. I can also use my own textures. I showed that in another video. Or I use ready-made textures, for example, and assign them to a wall. I'm not protecting anything right now and assign this texture to a wall. Sometimes textures are displayed a bit incorrectly, and they only display properly when you go to lightning up here and click recalculate shadows. The shadow is then recalculated and when calculating the shadow, the textures become much more visible as they are in the catalog. So, let's wait for a moment until the calculation is finished and then click OK. Next, there's the undo function up here. It's very helpful, for example, to undo things that have changed before. Then there's the show all feature up here. Show all. It's very helpful because sometimes you get tangled up in the floor plan, and if you accidentally drew something far outside the floor plan, let's say here, and you don't know it, or if you're lost and can't find the floor plan again, then you click on show all up here and the floor plan is shown to you again. And sometimes you accidentally draw a wall out here and forget about it. When you then print, some wall is printed far outside and you wonder what it is doing there. If you click on show all here, then the entire area in which something was drawn is shown. And then you see, aha, there's a wall out there. I have now clicked on it and pressed the delete key on the keyboard and the wall was erased. Next, I just want to open 2D mode and draw an example house once. To do this, I click on a new project, close the old one, enlarge it, and I only select the 2D mode again. Now I select a wall, and this is now the case with all functions, so that the how bar appears here. Here I can decide how this should be drawn. For example, as a polygon or as a normal wall, as a round wall and so on. I can choose different walls, the thickness. And select various functions here before drawing. Here below the catalog opens, in which I can also select a wall from the catalog. You can also save your own walls and leave them in the catalog. 
You can also edit walls before drawing or after drawing. So I'm going to draw a wall now. As a polygon, and as soon as the room is closed, the program recognizes it and automatically calculates the area and names the space. I can now click on this room with the left mouse button. Click on room data and change the name here and make other settings for this room. Next, I'll briefly draw a door. It is explained in detail in a separate video how to close doors. That's why I'm not going to explain it here. You click once with the left mouse button. Then you can select the inside of the wall where the window should be placed, and then you click further. So again with the left mouse button.